Welcome back to What RT Noobs with General Disturbance, and this is a 212A, the Tier 9 Soviet SPG, and we're on the defending spawn of Karelia. This is an assault battle, and I can see there's a 203mm howitzer on that uh, 212, uh, and I'm expecting some good things. Now, the name of the commander is Rekka Seaman. And he's headed for the back of the uh, map as quickly as he can. Don't want to be seen by the enemy scouts. If you are, you are going to receive some artillery fire. Right, one of the scouts has been seen. It's a Sheridan. I'm not sure if Rex has actually got uh, six cents, so he can actually tell if he's been spotted. But he's only going to be safe once he's down the other side of that uh, ridge line. The Sheridan is receiving fire, so at least that's uh, something. Okay. Now, Rekasim has got a reload time of 32.91 seconds, and that's good because that normally would be 43.5 seconds for his reload. And he's extending his aim, looking for a target. He's found a Batchat 25 ton in the center area, and that's a retreating AMX 13. Oh, that round tracked the Batchat! And that's good because that's given the AMX-13-105 a chance to reload and escape. And it looks like the Batchat's been tracked again. And he's receiving more fire and he's gone. That's good. I thought for a second that AMX was going to go down. Well, it's T-92 with that Tier 8 Premium Scout. And he was up near that tree now. He's disappeared from sight, so we can't get a shot on him at the moment. But there's an IS-3 um, and a, a, I think it's a T-10 going up uh, onto that uh, northeast corner of the map. So they should be able to spot some of the enemy any shortly. Now he's fired around in there, hoping that the enemy is still there. Yes, he was still there. He was unspotted, but he actually did get around in there. I think he did do some damage to him and he certainly stunned him and made him think twice about sitting in that position. And there's a Death Star just the other side of that pass. Oh, he just got a shot in, took a big chunk out of the SD-1. And there's also a Scorpion there. But he's hiding behind that rock. He knows that he's RT safe in that position or well, he's moved into an RT unsafe area. Lining up a shot round out. Oh, he pick up Nice splash there, 381 hit points, two critical hits, and a massive stun. So that's going to put that Scorpion out of action for a little while. That Death Star's still putting in good hits, he just hit the T-10. And he's been joined by the Scorpion now. Can... Can Rexim actually... Uh, Rexim then, sorry, put a, um, a round in to take out both of them. Rounds out. Well, it must have splashed the Scorpion because he was still there. And it did stun the Death Star. And there's a fire! One of the tanks has just scored a fire on the FV and he didn't have a fire extinguisher. So he did um, lose quite a few hit points. And he's decided to pull up, which means that we'll probably get a sight of him very shortly. There he is. Okay, he's lining up for a shot. But unfortunately, Rekka Seaman's not ready to uh, shoot. Now he is. Round out. And a direct hit. 275 hit points. Looks like it hit the gunner's area. Because you can see a yellow mark. Next to that white mark, there's a yellow mark where the shell landed. Okay, tier 9 French autoloader. Air mix 5120. Oh, unfortunately, he just took out the SC-1. No, actually, sorry, he took out the IS-3. The SD-1 was taken out by one of the enemy RT. Round out. Well, that probably landed nearby that 5120. And that is a Unicum player, that one. Okay, 
Okay, to the south we've got a Type 4 Heavy trying to sneak up past the rocks. But he's been taken out by the Badger. Now we know there's an IS-3 or it's been seen up there near the ridge line. He fires around in where it's last spotted, but doesn't appear to be any result. A Tiger 2 was also up on the horseshoe. Ah, now they we can see where they are. They actually went round the other side, so that shot was wasted, unfortunately. Uh, but the IS-3 is now making his way uh, west. And he's chasing that 13, uh, 13105. It's loaded. Rounds out. Will he hit something? Not sure on that one. It seemed to be a little further away from where the IS-3 was travelling, so... Would have been easier to shoot at that point there, because the IS-3 has to come up around that corner, and it's very slow, because it's very steep at that point. Um, which would have made it easier. Yes, there they are. You can see that they're slowly, slowly making their way west. And they're now engaging the AMX. Lined up, rounds out. Looks good. Well, he splashes the IS-3 for 246. And puts some stun on them. Right, that T-92 is trying to sneakily creep up the ramp in the centre. He's indicating where he's looking. Ah, oh, there he is. There's the T-92. Lined up and round up. Come on. He fired. Oh, he got a hit. Direct hit. 416. Right, what can we see about the um, 212? Well, it was actually supposed to be designed on the chassis of a KV220. Um, it was a design that was uh, uh, considered, but um, unfortunately the project kept on being delayed because the factory that was uh, supposed to make it was too busy manufacturing tanks because uh, tanks were in much higher demand. So the project kept on being postponed and eventually it got to the point where uh, they cancelled it altogether. So it never actually got built. But it was supposed to either carry the BR2 152mm howitzer or the B4, the 203mm, which is what we're using here. The IS-3, stationary at the moment, is trying to creep up on the Badger slowly without getting uh, hit by the Badger. And that makes it easier for a recce seaman to shoot him. Because while he's going to hover around a particular point, as he keeps creeping up to try and shoot. Rounds out. That must have hit his rear. Oh, very close. Very close. That must have stunned the IS-3. At the very least, it stunned him. No, it didn't. He managed to sneak past without getting stunned. Or he used his first aid kit to cancel the stun. And the Badger is now being backed into a little corner. Or oh, he's been hit by the enemy arty. This That was the two-minute warning, by the way. This is an assault battle, so they've only got two minutes to... Uh, Kill all the enemy tanks, or kill all the Reconcens... Reconcens team! And that IS-3 met his doom, 74 hit points, he stayed absolutely stationary and allowed a lovely shot by a Reconcens seaman to take him out. I should say Rexymen actually, Rexymen. I do apologise if I've mispronounced your name. Now, we know the Death Star is in that corner there. And shots are going in. Is he going to try one? Yes, he is. Firing around in blind to try and get some stun. That's the minute uh, clock. So it looks as if the enemy are still having difficulty because there's still three tanks on Rexy Men's time, uh, side alive. Oh no, two. Now, only one, one other tank, the Lerva. So it looks like Rexy Men's uh, trying to get the protection of that rock. There's only 28 seconds to go. The Lerva's facing off against the Death Star. 
and we know the AMX 5120, who's the Unicom, is near the cap. So he's probably going to be headed into this area as quickly as he can to try and find Reximen. He knows the Lurvers there. Now Reximen's... What did he do there? Did he just shotgun his own teammate? He did! He shotgunned his own teammate to win a Connor Banoff. That is absolutely disgusting. Uh, I am absolutely appalled that he would do that. Um, what a thing to do. The clock's run out, and so technically he is the only one left alive, but he just killed his own teammate to win a Kolobanov medal. Um, that is a ridiculously awful thing to do. Um, anyway, uh, what I'm going to do is now is I'm going to... Uh, go to the results and yes we can see he did kill his own teammate he killed the lurver uh, and yes he did win a Kolobanov but by all rights he shouldn't be allowed to win a Kolobanov and uh, I'm sure the uh, lurver must have reported him for this because uh, this is a totally appalling way to win one you don't win a Kolobanov by killing your own teammates um, and I think really, to be honest, uh, I'm not very happy about putting this video up onto the page, but I will put it up because I'm now going to report him to Wargaming for this because uh, this should never have happened. Uh, what an appalling thing to do to your own team to kill them just so you can end up with a medal. And I've seen this done before. I've seen even Unicum streamers uh, try to damage one of their own teammates so they could get to the last kill so they could then win a medal. But you don't deliberately kill one of your own teammates to win a medal. That is really, really terrible. Uh, and I'm absolutely, frankly, disgusted that Reximan did this. Um, quite appalling. You should be ashamed of yourself for doing that. Uh, what a terrible thing to do. So I'm not going to give the report at the end. I'll just let the uh, screen, um, so you can see the screens uh, for the, the information. I'm not going to read out the information as I normally would. Um, I'm just going to leave these here so you can see the amount of damage and he was fined but uh, he should be banned by Wargaming for this because uh, uh, you don't do that sort of thing in battle how can your teammates trust you if, you, if you're going to shoot them at the end just so you can pick up a medal absolutely disgusting okay well I'm, I'm going to finish the replay here uh, I would normally say at the end of the replay, please give this a like, but um, to be honest, I don't really want you to give a like to something where somebody did something so bad in a replay. And in fact, actually, what I would like you to do is report this to Wargaming and ask for them to ban this particular player because we don't want players like this playing RT because they bring a, a bad reputation on the rest of the RT players uh, for behaving so badly. Um, so I'll leave it to you then.